Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Those of us that were here Wednesday night, we're seriously blessed. Frankly, we are all the time when we gather together in Jesus' name, but specifically of the things that were said by the youth, the song and worship and so forth. It was very inspirational. Amen. We were admonished to recognize the glory of God, how awesome he is. We were reminded to not address him as the man upstairs. He's much more worthy of accolade from our vocabulary, much more than that. Amen. Of the various things that was expressed and shared Wednesday night, though a wayfaring man need not err therein, the scripture says, the gospel is simple. It's easy to understand. The challenge is yielding to that simple truth. Letting go, there's where the tough part is. In agreement with what the truth is all about, there's where our biggest challenge is, is a yielding, agreeing to, letting go, however you want to say it. The truth is simple. The offer that God makes is simple. It's misfortunate that we have been caught up in our past, at least, hope, so not, hope not so much anymore. We've been so caught up with me, myself, and I because of generational influences, forefathers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then all of a sudden here we are in this world and we have this influence. But we have this hope, this marvelous hope that God has given us for deliverance, for healing, for blessing, for honor and joy, and it's very simple. Just say to the Redeemer, I accept and trust him from then on out. Oh, there will be a battle. There's a challenge because we're still in this body. But the blessing of the Lord makes rich, adds no sorrow, and he's forever faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your kindness and mercy towards us, for the hope and joy that we have in you. Thank you for ministering in this service this morning to encourage us, to remind us, and cause us to know the assurance, the confidence that we have in Jesus our Lord. I pray, Father, that you direct my words this morning, that I present your word as you would desire, and that we hear truth and are convinced by your spirit that we draw closer to you and serve you faithfully in this hour. We ask that your love, your grace, and mercy continue to be effectual in us and that we be a light and inspiration to others and that your will be accomplished in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you for being here this morning. It's accounted. It's recorded. God knows you're here, and we're here for a purpose. If everything that's going on in our life, there's a purpose. It's uh, sometimes easily defined, other times we don't have a clue what's going on, but there's a purpose. And if you want to know what scripture upholds that, God has a plan. All things work together, those types of things. So we need comfortably, confidently to trust him and have expectation of his purpose and plan to be accomplished in us. But it requires us to agree. We must agree with him so that his promises are real to us, that we experience those promises. Uh, I really like, I really love the concept that he's always with us. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He'll stick closer than a brother. He's with us all the time. He knows very well what's going on. He even knows what we think. He even knows what we're going to decide. He, he even sends answers to prayer before we pray him. He's the kind of God that wants very much that we know him, love him, serve him, and be with him forever and ever and ever in that relationship, in that covenant, in that joy for a long, long time. Okay, <clears throat> Matthew, I'm sorry, I said, what did I say Matthew? Luke chapter 17. A few chapters, a few days prior to what we're going to look at this morning, he was uh, very busy. He was traveling through Samaria and Judea. And he was teaching about the lost sheep. You remember the hundred sheep and one got lost. He taught about the prodigal son. You remember there was three stories within that little story. Uh, he taught about stewardship, the law and the prophets, the rich man and the beggar. 
faith as a grain of mustard seed and a few others until we get down to chapter 17 and starting with verse 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now, if you know anything about leprosy, we know it's really, really bad. So much so that a mask and six feet apart didn't get it. But it's interesting to notice, as I studied this, uh, what was required of the leprous person. We understand skin conditions like eczema, seborrhea, psoriasis, skin cancers of various kinds. We're familiar with the concept of skin cancers and conditions. Sometimes there's remedies, sometimes there's not. Leprosy is a very contagious skin condition it has boils, lesions, being inflamed, feverish. Sometimes the colored uh, boils are colored white. Sometimes they're red. It can cause the hair around that area to turn white at the location, and you can even lose your fingers and toes because of leprosy. People with leprosy were to go to the priest, and he would determine, decide, and prescribe according to the law what they needed to do. This is the concept of this message this morning, that when we go to our high priest, he's going to determine, he's going to decide, which we know pretty much what that is already, and he will administer a type of prescription that we need to follow in order to find deliverance and healing and joy secured in our life, that we're convinced of it. You know, we say we have joy and we're happy and we trust the Lord and we're all these kind of wonderful things. That's true. But when something comes along and hits our life and we stumble, it seems like that concept of joy is way out there 100 yards away. That realization of the peace seems like it's hard to find. No one understand if we'll follow what the priest has to say. And I'm talking about Jesus. When we follow what he has to say, what will follow with that is something that we're looking for. Every one of us are looking for something in life of one sort or kind or the other. Too often the time we're too satisfied with what we find. And we don't want to search anymore because it seems to be okay for a day or two, and then we're out looking for something else. It's okay for a week or two, but if we'll go straight to Jesus, if we'll go straight to our high priest, the Father of lights, and find him and trust him and ask of him, do what he says, He'll provide what's necessary. Anybody have any prescriptions? All, most all of us probably do of one kind or the other. Jesus has a prescription. It's something that's called deliverance. It's called healing. It's called blessing. It's called various types of things. And he has it for us to use and be involved in so that, that will be a blessing to us. Hallelujah. They were to go to the priest uh, he will determine and decide and prescribe what's needed. These lepers were segregated and put outside the camp a hundred paces away, about 300 yards or 300 feet. That's how far, far more than six feet, way out there. And it was also, this is back in Leviticus, if you want to look it up. It was also expected of them to put a cloth over their mouth as a corpse in death. This is how serious leprosy was. They were to cry unclean. They were to rend their clothes, shave their head, and they were, to, they were proclaimed as defiled. He has a plague. This is how serious it was. Bad deal. Can't associate with. Excommunicate. All those kinds of concepts. Leprosy is a type of sin. When people have sin in their life, it's as though we should separate from them. It's as though it should be covered. It, should be, it, it is as though it's a plague. Don't touch, don't get a closer, don't be involved in it at all. Leprosy was a situation back then, it still is, but maybe not quite so, as hideous and so uh, stringent of a concern. But the scripture tells us right here that Jesus has done a certain thing. And we'll get to that here in a second. Uh, let's carry on read a little bit more. 
Uh, they stood afar off, far off, verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Nothing's going to change in your life unless you call upon the Lord. Nothing's going to be of any betterment in your life unless you open up your mouth and say something to him. Oh, we can think things, that's cool. We can think things in our mind, that's cool. But it's when we say something audible. Does he have to hear us say something? No, it's us choosing to actually say something that we hear ourselves say something. That's going to make a difference. <clears throat> Argue if you want to. Does the devil talk to you audibly? Rare, if ever. Does the Lord talk to you audibly? Rare, if ever. What did Jesus do when he was here? He talked audibly. What did God do in the beginning? He talked audibly. What do we need to do? He says, say. We need to say something to the Lord. We need to call upon him. Call upon him with an audible voice. But I don't like it. It's uncomfortable. Persuade yourself to be different. Persuade yourself to be different. And said, these lepers said, and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. We're in serious need here. They're a hundred yards away, 300 feet away approximately. And they shouted out. And he was supposed to stay away. Everybody knew it. They had a plague. Unclean. How would you like to live in society like that? It's not a comfortable thing. It's not a wonderful thing. It's not a joyous thing. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when I read that and studied this, I remembered, I think it was Emily Wednesday night, told us how that we need to address him as Lord. Master, hallowed be thy name. The, the word master means Lord, house master, commander, teacher, doctor, leader, guide, rabbi. When you talk to the Lord, address him with respect and with honor. Ah, oh, pastor's no big deal. How do you like it when somebody calls at you and says, hey, you, come here, you jerk, and other things? We don't do that, do we, when we talk to somebody that's respectful, especially if they're the one that's going to help us in our need. We want to say something respectful, honorable, appreciative. Amen. They called him master. They shouted out and said, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, is Jesus going to see us if we don't <laughs> call upon him? You remember the blind man, Bartimaeus. Jesus was going by. Remember what he said? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He stopped the caravan. And they wanted him to come. Oh, don't bother with him. He's just a nuisance. It's all right. Don't bother. <clears throat> when we say, when we call upon the Lord... And it's not that you have to be loud, but if you're in need, you're going to get louder than, oh, Lord, if you have time, if you, get, you wouldn't want to help me today, would you? <clears throat> There's a difference between that and say, Father, please help me. I'm in need, whatever the case may be. These gentlemen shouted out and said, Master, have mercy on this. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, go. <clears throat> when he saw them, they got his attention. He said, go. How long did it take for Jesus to decide once he heard them shout at him to tell them to go? Just momentarily. He probably didn't stand there. I don't know, but probably didn't stand there pondering, well, whether these guys have faith or not, whether these guys have the right motive or not. He saw them, and in a moment's time, he knew their need. He wanted to show his grace and compassion. And so forth and so on. He said, go. This is the, what uh, Jesus is going to do when we go to uh, our master, to our high priest. He's going to determine in the moment that we call upon him. He's going to determine, look at our heart, and he's going to decide in a moment's time. Amen. Then he'll offer prescription. He'll offer something to do. Hallelujah. He'll offer something to do every time. It might be something that you've done a lot. Well, Lord, I've done that already. He'll ask you to do it again. You may be in a position that you've done all that you know to do and don't know what to do next. And he'll ask you to do something completely out of character, completely that makes no sense at all. But he said, and according to the law, he said, go show yourself to the priest. Let's see. Uh, go show themselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. In the moment they decided, 
in a few moments, one or two, a minute or two, I don't know, I'm just guessing, as they were going to Jerusalem to where the priest was, didn't travel very far in a short amount of time. It wasn't a gradual healing. healing. It happened just pretty quick. As they went, healing came upon their bodies, Brother Dean. When the, the master said, go do whatever was necessary, and it may be totally different for every one of us that he would tell us what to do in the same situation. In the same situation, he's very likely to tell each of us something different to do. Amen. The healing that the man received is because he obeyed, or they all did, they all ten did, is because they obeyed, Je obeyed Jesus, and he, they went as if they were going to go to the priest. What did they do first? They recognized their need. They saw the master. They must have heard something about Jesus Christ, and they cried out, Please have mercy on us. Jesus saw them. In a moment's time, determined, decided, he said, go, because this was what's expected in society. Couldn't Jesus have done it without what the society is expected? Sure. But look what will happen afterwards if this happened or if that don't happen or if this does happen or if that don't happen. Jesus knows very well how to handle your situation among your family, among your fellow employees, among your situation. He knows how to handle your situation, so don't question. Well, he only asked Terry to sing Amazing Grace, and she got her healing. Why can't I sing Amazing Grace? Her circumstance is totally different than yours. Faith level may be different. Outside influences might be more successful in one than the other. All kinds of things that's going on. Jesus saw them, determined, made up his mind, and prescribed, go to the priest. As the law said, the priest was to come and see and, and proclaim and thus and so on the list I told you a while ago to cry this and cry that, put a cloth over your faith, stay out there. Come, come, come. All these kinds of things. They went, and as they went, they noticed that they were cleansed. And as they came, uh, and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Number fifteen. And one of them, when he saw, when he saw, when we recognize that we can acknowledge and realize what God has done in our lives, we need to respond to Him. Amen. Anybody thank God that you got here safely this morning? Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. Anybody going to thank God for the meal you're going to have today at some point? Of course we are. What about the dessert? What about the one who fixed it? What about the nap you're going to have? Are you going to thank God for the little things? Are you going to thank God for the big things? There's some things that we thank God for that's wonderful, and that's good, but we need to have a heart of thanksgiving, and that's what this message is about. It's wonderful that God blesses us, His favor is upon us, His mercy and His love is with us. That's ongoing. We're loaded down with benefits all the time, and we need to be thankful. Jesus says at the end of this little passage, He says, where's the rest of them? Ten percent only came back and thanked Him and worshiped Him. Where's the rest of them? They all were blessed. We're all blessed. How many of us this morning are thanking God, praising God, answered to prayer, it's going to be a benefit. It's going to be a blessing. It's going to be an honorable thing because I'm thanking Him and honoring Him. Be faithful to Him. Jesus said, go. They went. They were expecting. Just in a moment's time, very short time, one noticed. When you notice that you've been blessed because you got somewhere, I mean, I'm just making up a, a random list. Got your bill paid. Got a raise on your uh, uh, job. Well, thank the Lord. I got 50 cent raise. That's pretty good. Tomorrow, you're gonna to, you're gonna thank him again. Next week, when you get your paycheck and it's however much more, you're gonna thank God for that because you got extra to do whatever you need extra. Amen. God is blessing us all the times, benefits, uh, blessings, and promises, and all these things are ongoing in our lives. We need to be constantly praising Him and thanking Him for what He's doing and what He's providing. Uh, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Loud voice glorifying God. Now, this says it was a loud voice, and there's nothing wrong with a loud voice. It's not uh, wrong that it's not so loud a voice. But we need to praise God. Hallelujah. Anybody thankful for God's blessings? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Every time somebody prays for the offering. The offering comes in. Praise God for answering that prayer. Whatever the amount is, it's going to be sufficient. And often it's the case, it's more than necessary. Aren't you glad that God is a bountiful God? Aren't you glad that we have more than we need? 
Amen. A blessing to be able to do more than what we're having to get by on. I mean, that's where everybody is to some point. For a little while, we were making and getting just as much as we can get by on. But in time, when you strategize and you believe God concerning tithes and you're a good steward, that's going to double. That's going to put you in a position so you can bless and help others. Amen. That is a reason right there to glorify God. And Matt, he answers prayer. Amen. I'm expecting change in Brother Sandy's eyes. I am. I, I don't know what degree. I don't know the condition. I just heard that he needed prayer for his eyes. We're going to pray for his eyes. We prayed. Caitlin's is too. Hallelujah. He with a loud voice glorified God. Verse 16. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Now, whether we fall down on our face, that's up to you, between you and the Spirit. Nothing wrong with that. It's not that it's a right thing or a wrong thing. What it definitely does is show honor to the majesty. It shows respect. Staying quiet and still while the Spirit is moving. Showing respect. Not drawing attention to yourself by being one way or the other. If you have a serious need and you want people to pray for you and you're standing up here praying, do you want people goofing off back there, laughing and sending notes and joking off? Pitiful. <clears throat> that person, the guilty party, shouldn't expect much if they want prayer. Shouldn't expect much if they want prayer. A uh, Samaritan, there's a stranger, an outsider, foreigner, whatever you want to call it, but this person is a human being. They need love and care and understanding just like the rest of us. They need love, care, and understanding just like the rest of us. God is gracious and kind. He's not a what of persons? Respecter of persons. He don't love one more than the other. Amen. Things are more beneficial for some than others because they believe, they trust, they're faithful, they're a good steward, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's why there's differences that we perceive. But all of us have the same opportunity, have the same privilege to trust God and believe God. Amen. Which was more impressive, all the rich Pharisees or the widow with two mites? Hands down. <laughs> no contest. Don't shortchange God's ability by where you're at in life. Amen. Okay, almost finished. When we recognize God's blessing, favor, mercy, love of any kind or benefit, we need to glorify Him, praise Him, and magnify His precious name. Don't wait nor depend on anybody else. Don't wait nor depend on anyone else. You're the one that will or will not. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? We don't know the man's answer. Maybe he was real good friends with the nine. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was just in the crowd because of their condition. We don't know. He didn't answer as far as we know. He might have been embarrassed. He might have been frustrated. He might have been glad they're... Wherever they're at, doing whatever they're doing, we don't know. They were all cleansed. They all had the right and privilege to honor and glorify the Lord just as he did. But Jesus asked the question, where are they at? We can ask the same question this morning. Where are they at? They're blessed just like we are. Christians like we are. Various other things that we can say like we are. Do we want to narrow it to 10%? I hope not. I hope not. The blessing of the Lord is rich all the time. He doesn't provide sorrow any time. He's always with us. He's always faithful. He always knows. He's all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present. Jesus asked the question, Weren't there ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Usually when I pray, I'll say, Father... Encourage those that aren't here that could have been. Speak to their hearts. Let them know how important and needful they are in the ministry. I also pray, Father, encourage and bless and comfort those that would love to be here but just can't. I'm so thankful for God's plan for his love his grace all these wonderful things that's in my life and yours too 
I want to thank Him. I want to praise Him. I want to serve Him. Whether my prayer is answered in a way that's different than what I was expecting or thinking, I don't want that to let that be a hindrance of me uh, worshiping Him and serving Him and praising Him. Because just simply accepting me into His family is good enough. Regardless whether any of my prayers are ever answered, that's good enough. He'll answer my prayers if I believe and trust him and wait patiently. They'll be answered. That's in Scripture. I need to watch my heart. I need to watch my motivation. I need to watch because I'll distract myself, and you will too if we're not careful. Almost finished. There are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. What were the circumstances in this story? There were ten of them. They had a contagious skin disease. They were uh, uh, quarantined. There were certain things by the law that the priests expected them to be and to do and behave. They were uh, subject to pretty a whole lot of misery, circumstances of their life. And he says, go thy way, thy faith. <clears throat> Any one of them could have said, no, I hurt too bad. No, I miss mama. No, I don't want to have to wear this mask on my, over my face. No, I don't want to be 300 feet away. I just want to be 10. You know, a lot of things that can contested their so-called believing and trusting and having faith. As Jesus told the one, he said, your faith has made you whole. What, did the, what, hap, what caused this to happen? He cried out to God Almighty, to Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When Jesus saw the need, made the prescription, go to the priest. And he did. That's what he did. From that point on. Don't drop the concept of following what the law says, what the Scripture says. When we have a need, we call upon the Lord, and the Spirit will minister something that will uphold what this truth is all about. And if we'll choose to follow that and keep following it, without question, debate, excuse, da 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 da, -da, -da if we'll not do that, we'll find deliverance just like this man did. We will. Amen. That's the truth. I believe that. I'll promote that till I die. If we'll follow the Word. Have faith and confidence in Him. Things will change to our benefit and to His glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The process of believing, asking, and by faith, rejoicing, expecting, with God's grace and purpose and plan and growing in the nurture and admonition of the Lord may far outweigh what you've asked for in the first place. Will far outweigh what you asked for in the first place. Amen. I believe that. Amen. His faith was demonstrated when Jesus told him to go, and he went. Psalms 30, verse 12 says this, O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What is this message about? Do what God says and be thankful. Don't be so terribly concerned with the outcome. Whatever the outcome uh, will be will be to your benefit and it will be to God's glory. Our place, our office, our status, our position now is to call upon Him, trust Him, and do what He says. And for the most part, for the most part, we already know. For the most part. Sometimes there's particulars, sometimes there's details. And uh, he'll offer them if necessary. May the Lord richly bless you. I trust that you received something from the Word of God today. Uh, we have. We have. If you believe that and have confidence in that truth, we have. Praise God. Put it to practice. Put it to use. Don't leave your shield and sword in the closet. Don't leave your shield and sword in the closet. Amen. Anyone else need prayer today? I know we've prayed already for two or three. Anyone else need prayer?